Hello there, my name's Zane Lemetcher, and welcome to the review. Uh, and this is a review on Backman Arian Burt. Uh, now, you've probably seen I actually have Arian Burt in the Hornby range as well. Uh, got nothing against the Hornby models, I think they are very nice models. And um, I think initially, when I done my review on them, I done a review on them with Hornby Diesel as well as a joint review. I said initially that um, I preferred the Hornby ones to these ones. Um, however, um, Although I still do like the Hornby ones, I think in some ways these ones are a lot better. Um, so with the Hornby ones, um, they're painted like a... So their green paintwork is painted like a bottle green sort of livery. Um, whereas this is the proper sort of khaki green colour that they were painted uh, in the television series. And the yellow is the right colour as well, I think. Um, also, the faces on the Hornby models were based upon a Splatter and Dodge's faces from Thomas and Magic Railroad. So Splatter and Dodge were two twin engines that were only in that film. Um, whereas, say, these ones are actually based upon Arian and Burt's faces uh, from the CGI animated series of the show. Um, Arian and Burt were in the model series, first of all. Uh, they appeared in the episode Stepney Gets Lost. Um, and in that episode, um, Ari spoke, but Burt uh, didn't. Although Bert was named and Harry wasn't. Uh, it wasn't really until Series 6 we actually got to know who they actually were. Um, so like I said, these are more based upon what Harry and Bert looked like in the CGI animated series. And, um, as I probably you remember me saying that review before, if you've watched it, on the Hormy models, um, the faces um, on these models in my opinion, make them look a bit too nice, whereas, um, you know, like the Ertl ones, for example, um, they're based upon, the faces on their models are based upon what they look like uh, in the model series of the show, and make them look a lot more sort of men menacing, a bit more devious. I mean, they've obviously been quite devious. They, they tried to scrap Stepney. Uh, they upset Neville, the new engine, on his first day. And they scared Fergus away from the cement works when he came to work there. Um, however, though, saying that, in the... Um, TV series as well, as well as being menacing, Harry and Bert have shown to have a good side as well, like when they helped build the Soda Airport. Um, and they've also shown, you know, to be caring for a, you know, a fellow engine. And, um, you know, they've also say, shown to have a soft side on many occasions. So they're not all that bad. Um, so for that reason, I, I think, you know, when I've done the right review, um, a lot of them episodes haven't really been round, whereas obviously now they have sort of things. So I think it shows that Harry and Bert are both good and bad, really. Uh, now, the way you're actually supposed to tell these models apart is the fact that Bert, which is this one here, and Harry's on the left here, so Bert's supposed to have more stubble. Um, and if you look at the packaging on the back of them, it shows you um, their photos, and you can see Bert's got stubble, uh, Harry's not really got any. Um, Whereas on these models, both of the faces are exactly the same. Now, um, obviously, you've probably seen in my other videos, I've got Bill and Ben in the Backman range, and I've got Donald and Douglas. And Bill and Ben, they both have different faces, whereas Donald and Douglas, although they're both the same, um, you can tell them apart because of their names, whereas in Harry and Bert, it's a little bit hard to sort of tell them apart because they've both got the same face mask, pretty much. And um, at first when we got these, it was a bit hard to tell the difference between the two. Um, however, looking at them from a distance now, you can sort of see um, that although Harry's got a little bit of stubble, but has more and it's a bit thicker, a bit darker. And um, when you look at it from this sort of distance, and I think with lighting as well, uh, and from where I'm standing now, you can see that difference a lot more as well. Uh, another way, unfortunately, I can tell them apart is the fact that Harry uh, has a bit of a scratch on him, unfortunately. And that was when I got him out of the packaging. When they are in the packaging... They were with that side facing and that side against the um, packaging. So, say, Harry got a bit of a scratch, unfortunately, um, but paint over it, probably. But again, moving on to the packaging. Um, although the packaging does look really nice, um, I don't think it's anywhere near as good as the old Hornby style of packaging, which actually protected the models from getting scratched. So that is a bit of a downside. Uh, Running-wise, I thought these both run really well indeed. Although I found that when they were on their own, uh, they were a bit sort of wobbly, but when they were pulling something, they were a bit better. Um, however, um, you probably know if you're an enthusiast, that when you buy a new model, you're actually supposed to run it for an hour one way and then an hour the other way to help sort of wear it in. Uh, and as I say, I bought these both brand new, um, but they've been discontinued now for a while. It's quite strange, really, because back when very rarely seems to discontinue anything. Uh, the only one I've ever really known to discontinue is uh, Salty, which sort of surprised me, really. 
because uh, Salty, really, from when he first sort of appeared in the model series, has always been a main character, and he still appears in the CGI animated series. Uh, and in my opinion, he's actually appeared more than Harry and Bert, to be honest with you, even though they appeared before him in Series 5 and he appeared in Series 6. Um, Harry and Bert, um, you know, so say Salty has appeared more than Harry and Bert, and, um, you know, they've been in the episode, more recent sort of episodes, um, you know, just sort of seen in the background, really, um, not playing sort of a major part at all, speaking occasionally, uh, very limited sort of appearances, really, uh, when you think about it, compared to Salty. Um, and I doubt we'll really see Arian Burt again now, unfortunately, because of the way the show is going with the 2D animation. Um, but then I probably won't really watch that, to be honest. I mean, I don't really watch the show now anyway. But from what I've seen, they don't really appear much now anyway, which is a bit of a shame, I think. Because um, I've always really liked Arian Burt. And, I re and, you know, although I've always said I'm more of a steam enthusiast, I do like some of the old Diesels as well. And I'll be really glad when they bring out Daisy into the Batman range. Um, and there's been a video on social media recently of her sort of prototype and uh, James as well in the N-Gage range, which um, I don't think I'm not really going to buy the N-Gage range, but, you know, it's nice to look at, um, you know, and in the catalogue as well. Um, yeah, this year you can see there's quite a lot, but so unfortunately Harry and Bert have been discontinued, which does sort of surprise me. But then I suppose it depends on what we're selling and what wasn't. Um, if you look at these models of Harry and Bert, you can see that they've got silver side rods. Uh, so when they first appeared in Series 5, their side rods are painted silver. Um, however, from series uh, six onwards, uh, the side rods have been painted black, uh, and it was the same with Diesel. His were grey when he first, like grey silver when he first appeared. And from series six onward, they were painted black. Personally, I prefer them in the silver colour. I think they look a lot more realistic. Personally, uh, and if you look on the back of them, these models don't have a lamp on the back. Although in again the later series, they gained a lamp on the back, and also on the front of their bodies just there. Um, there was actually a light as well, which appeared to be switched on at night time as well, on the front of them, which was sort of moulded into them. But, um, yeah, so, so unfortunately these models don't come with um, any... Well, so they do come with lights, but they don't have a light on the back. Um, but they have the little bits on the front anyway, but, yeah. And they come with moving eyes as well, uh, like most of them do. And it probably doesn't capture them as well on camera sort of things. It does sort of see it visually. But they do look really good with moving eyes as well, I think. Let's say they do run really, really nicely. So yeah, that was Arian Burt running, so like I said, I think they run really nicely. Uh, again, going back to the stubble really, in some episodes, when you see them next to each other, they're both wearing the same face mask, and Burt's stubble wasn't really that visible on him. Um, however, in other episodes, uh, it was. Um, I suppose one of the things we have to sort of look carefully, really. But like I said, then you've got sort of really little air time you can't really see, I guess. Um, and as well, I've got Arian Burt in the uh, wooden range, uh, as well as the say the Ertel range and the take along range and in all them ranges um, Burt has more stubble and it's a lot more sort of prominent than it is on uh, this back model in my opinion and so it wasn't even on their horn models and in my opinion they um, there's a photo here of their prototypes 
in Hornby. And uh, I think the prototypes actually looks a lot better. The only thing that's wrong with them is that they have a red buffer beam. Um, but again, um, they had a red buffer beam in the take-along range, though the take-along ones weren't always that fantastic. And however, later on when it came to take play and that, the detail became a lot better. Uh, though I don't have the take play models of Aaron Burt, but they have black buffer beams like I should do. Um, so yeah, these ones, the colours are all more or less cracked, um, you know, when you compare them to their uh, Hornby ones, like I said, which I do have. And so the faces look really nice um, as well. Where their windows are, it's sort of been painted left and silver, and I think that would be better in black. Um, and so do Ironworks um, logo. Um, looks quite nice again. It looks the same sort of font as it was uh, in the TV series. And so when they first appeared, the Sodor Ironworks was written, I think it was in the same font, but a lot, a lot smaller if you look carefully. But as well, there's a photo here from behind the scenes of when they first appeared in Series 5. Uh, series 5, they were really heavily weathered. And in um, you know from Series 6, they weren't as heavily weathered. Although, in my opinion, again, since they've come back in the CGI series, they've got a lot more sort of weathering, like uh, scratch paintwork and chips and all that sort of thing. Um, you know, and these are pretty immaculate, really. <laughs> But so I, I still think they look really good. Um, you know, I'm taking everything into consideration, not only the packaging. I don't intend to count sort of the packaging uh, sort of against the model when I'm doing a review sort of thing, really. Like I said, I think the packaging could be better. Better it was like the Hornby one, which protected it a lot more, in my opinion. But um, I think they're very good models overall, and I'd happily give them 8.5 out of 10, because I do think they're really good. Um, not that quite as give it a 10 out of 10, but I do really like these models, and I'm glad that I managed to get them now that they're discontinued. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.